Hey there, listener. Do you know about Foco Cafe? They are our nonprofit of the month for May. This is a restaurant located in Fort Collins, often known around these parts as Foco. But the Foco in this restaurant name also stands for Feeding Our Community Ourselves. Their executive director, Mallory Garneau, was on episode 46 of this podcast. To support the show and Foco Cafe, check out our website for more information. That's www.themoreyanoco.com. Welcome to the Morinoco, shining an audio spotlight on the awesome ideas and people of Northern Colorado. Human connection makes our lives better. Now is your chance. I am your host, Ivan Wayne. Let's do it! When starting this podcast, I knew I would stumble upon fascinating things around northern Colorado, and this episode is a perfect example. I had no clue that an international film festival is growing support and starting right here in the NOCO area. This film fest is trying to bring the community together, just like our podcast here. I am very excited to go to this event in September, and I hope you will too. We are joined by three members of their team, and without further delay, here they are. I sit here with three representatives of the Horse Tooth International Film Festival, it being three of them, and we sit here in the Innisfere. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then we'll jump right in so we can take turns. Okay, my name is John Hunt, and I'm one of the co-creators of HIF. I'm Katrina Fancook, and I'm the development director for HIF. And I'm Jesse Neinder, and I'm a co-creator for HIF as well. So HIF, that's how we're going to refer to it. Yes. I had not heard of that until just this very moment. Locally, at least. Yes. <laughs> okay. So for those people out there curious, what is HIF? What is this International Film Festival? Okay. So the Horse Tooth International Film Festival was developed um, based off of an idea by Jesse and I wanting to provide uh, a new opportunity for filmmakers in Northern Colorado and recognizing a lot of uh, quality talent in Northern Colorado. People not really having the kind of festival on the level of, say, Boulder International Film Fest or Telluride or Sundance or things like that. And we know there are a lot of smaller festivals around, but not many international film fest opportunities. So we saw a lot of talent here and we just wanted to provide an opportunity to compete with and learn from the international filmmaking community. And when you say international, does that just mean like you have invited people outside of the United States? Like, I guess, in my mind, a novice, what makes a film festival international? <laughs> well, I'd say the international aspect is definitely the fact that we are inviting people not only outside of Colorado and in this nation itself. We're doing like South America and an international world category. And the reason we are doing that, and it's an international festival, is the fact that we are really trying to bring in all kinds of talent from outside and show the creatives in this area that they're how to create and how to like step forward into their their own creative process. One of the things that we that we recognized was um, that, that there's a lot of talent in the area, but it can only grow so much when you're in a bubble and you're competing against the same people all the time, right? So just like if you play basketball against your sister all the time, you're probably only going to get as good as your sister is or, or makes you, right? But if you play against a pro, then it's going to make you better. So what we thought of was by, by providing the opportunity to interact with and learn from the international filmmaking community, it forces the local filmmakers to learn from that community, um, be inspired by that community, Having, having the opportunity to encounter new ways of, of creative thought and putting a, a story together or a film together. So yeah, we just wanted to provide you know that, that opportunity for growth for local filmmakers. Yeah, and I wouldn't shake a stick at that comment about a sister. She's like pro, so <laughs> <laughs> John's pretty good. So he just wants to give yeah. that. Yeah, well, and when they both approached me with the idea, 
they were really also very excited about trying to find a way to get Fort Collins and Loveland and all of Northern Colorado, Greeley, all these areas to work together more effectively as creatives. Because we each have little individual creative communities, but it's a stronger voice when we're all together and creating. Inclusiveness is something that I've preached since I moved here. And I moved here from Missouri, which was not very inclusive. Mm-hmm. Or there was <laughs> films were like mythical beasts that came out of the Hollywood caves on the coast. Mm-hmm. So out here, there's a lot of people that are trying to do stuff. And something that we like to say is this is a festival for filmmakers by filmmakers. Yeah, and to touch on that a little bit more, another one of the reasons that we wanted it to be an international fest was to promote diversity in the Mm -hmm. region. It's not as diverse as I think a lot of us wish it was or have been exposed to before we moved here. And so I think that by, you know, inviting the international community and even just the national community outside of uh, this area of Colorado, it forces us to interact with and mingle with Um, people and thinkers outside of our own our own way of of being and doing things it's what sparks creativity right connecting with different types of people with different ideas exactly and the only way we're going to grow is to grow together Mm -hmm. so you're inviting submissions from people who are from the you know from colorado the entire country the entire world are you also encouraging people to make films in northern colorado or is that like its own subcategory of this film festival yeah, so we wanted to pay homage to uh, you know Colorado by having a category specifically for Colorado films or filmmakers. And one of the cool things about the categories actually is, you know, if you look at a typical film festival, you'll see best drama or best thriller or best comedy and things like that. And instead of you know limiting people to a specific genre of filmmaking, we decided to make the categories designed around location. Uh, so, you know, location and, and the inter, intermingling of those uh, locations is really the focus. So we have uh, at the base level a Colorado film category. So that's just films by Colorado filmmakers or uh, people who filmed in Colorado, right? And then to the next level, we have the national category, which is same idea, but inclusive of, you know, the United States and Puerto Rico and the minor islands and things like that. And then the next one is the Americas category. So that's anybody who filmed in North, Central, South America or is from those continents who are who made a film, right? And then it goes the one world category, which is you can be from anywhere. Now, at, if you had a Colorado film, you could submit to any four of those categories if you want to compete at those levels. Oh, with, I see. Right? Uh, we also have, in addition to that, we have a virtual reality augmented reality dome film 360 film type category uh, which is taking place at the museum of discovery in their in their otterbox dome up in fort collins in fort collins and then the the main event and the other categories will be taking place at the rialto theater in loveland yeah. in its hundredth year of of being a theater for sure and something else too is like we are asking for submissions of all types i'm sure with a film festival you think of films, but we want to see your music videos. We want to see these installations that you're trying to create to make visual art. We're trying to make this into like a wider spread, like not just a 16 by 9 screen that you're looking at, but like the the entire thing is as, as immersive as you can be with the filmmaking scene. Mm-hmm. And there's also going to be art and music featured at the festival as well. Okay, so this is much more than just films. Yes. So this is very inclusive of different categories. It's mm-hmm. important for people to know. Because, in my mind, it thinks, hmm, I'm going to listen over the more you know code. Do I have something that belongs at this film festival? Which could be an appropriate place for us to let people know, if they're interested in getting involved with this, how do they submit and where should we send people? Well, we can definitely help you out with that. If you go to the horsetoothfilmfestival.com, we are taking submissions of all types. That is not just the filmmakers. We are looking for artists to play at our festival down at the Rialto, which is something that we are really excited about because we have an awesome stage, sound system, lighting with that. We also want to make sure that we have options for playing artists at the Dome if we want to. You know, So we want to see who's out there. We want to see who wants to get involved, and that's really going to help us shape this thing. So get a hold of us. Yeah, and to be clear, it's horsetoothfilmfestival.com. Yeah. 
And not the horse tooth. Do not put the in there. I just like to say the. It's one of my favorite words. Yeah, but we are accepting categories for submissions. It's actually still the early bird window, uh, which means that you can get in at a at a cheaper price. All of our submissions go through Film Freeway, which is a great platform for filmmakers. It's really easy to set up an account. It's free. And you just build a little profile about the video that you made, and then you submit that way. And that gives us access to to watch them all through the same platform and take uh, submission fees through the platform. And in the early bird window, it's it's very affordable. And in the category or the Colorado category, it's uh, additionally discounted. And then there's also if you're a student, it's discounted on top of that. So it's really not not expensive to be a part of it. Um, and, and we designed it that way, especially in year one. Uh, that that as many people who have any interest at all in being a part of the festival mm-hmm. are encouraged to submit. So yeah, we're looking for you know people who want to submit films. We're looking for musicians still. We have some slots to fill there. Uh, we're looking for artists and people who want who have who want to make film related art and uh, or film related art installations that will be you know live uh, art pieces at the actual events and then. We're also looking for volunteers to just want or from, from people who just want to get involved. And all of those submission forms are on the website at uh, horsetoothfilmfestival.com. And something else I want to bring up too, uh, Johnny, hey, we kind of breezed by the Film Freeway stuff, but I just want to say as a side note, if you are a filmmaker out there listening to this and you don't know what Film Freeway is, you need to get on that because that is the way to connect with every film festival in the world. You can literally put up a project and then just submit it to everyone you ever had, depending on how much money you have. So yeah, and, please be aware of that. And that's how we're getting filmmakers internationally as well and getting exposure to the international filmmaking community. But we encourage filmmakers to show their work in as many places as possible. Don't just submit to ours. You know, make a search and, and submit to as many as you can afford to. And, and a lot of them are really affordable to be a part of or, then, or to submit your film to. And then some of them, they also have dates set up to where you could literally set up a tour if you wanted to. For some reason, you are an international filmmaker and you want to hit the States. Put us on your tour map. We're September 6th through 7th this year, so make sure that you have a chance to pop in and Mm -hmm. show us your film. And we are also still looking for sponsors. So if you want to throw some money our way, a little presents our way, we are happy to connect with you about that too. Yeah, sponsors and partners. So, I mean, cash sponsors go a long way in helping us do everything that we're trying to do. But partnerships are also invited and extremely helpful you know, by being able to provide something. We have a sponsorship deck available uh, on the sponsorship section of our website, and we've been using that, whether you're a cash sponsor or a partner, uh, you know, to exchange value for whatever they're able to provide for the festival. So Mm -hmm. something else I want to bring up too. With this festival, the whole purpose is for all of us to grow together. And if you are a local business that wants to get exposure and you can't necessarily afford it, we need things that we have to pay for with that money anyways. And so if we could cut out the middleman and get those things, that's that's a partnership that we want to have. That's creative inspiration right there. Yeah, and the other thing I'd like to mention about that is we've taken into account that we are a year one festival. We all have success in our history of throwing such similar events. But we made our sponsorship deck really inviting. And for the amount that we're able to provide in terms of marketing trade, uh, for the amount that, that we're asking in uh, our first year sponsorship deck, it's it's really reasonable and should make people feel pretty good about getting involved in that way. Mm-hmm. And we're also offering to lock them in for the same return for the second mm-hmm. year if they if they get in on the ground level. Yeah, you get a lot of exposure and love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it would be neat if local sponsors could come out because you'd bypass this a little bit before, but... Bringing Northern Colorado together as one identity. It's not Greeley, Loveland, Fort Collins, Windsor, mm-hmm. Estes. Yeah. It is this, this idea of Northern Colorado coming together and supporting each other. Not just films, but any type of artist. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I have this unusual type of art. Maybe I have a spot here at HIP. And, you know, they wouldn't know unless they reached out to you. And so I sense this passion within you all to bring the community together. And it just happens to be through this film festival lens that you all are working in the community. Yeah, well, and just how other people being able to connect on something they're passionate about as an artist. Like, maybe they just want to make friends. They just want to meet people or learn something. That's an option, too. Yeah, we want to provide the next big opportunity around filmmaking 
to provide people a way to interact with each other and again promote diversity and all that stuff. If you look at Boulder International Film Fest, they're at the point right now where they're bringing in 65,000 people to a four-day weekend, over 90 venues. You know, it's a big deal and it started small the same way any film festival did and or, or Sundance, look how big that is now. And there's no reason that that can't happen here. We have such an awesome list of fun things and features and uh, things to show the rest of the surrounding community and even the nation and the international community for that matter. You know, Northern Colorado is, is a beautiful place with a lot to offer and there's no reason that we can't make an awesome film festival as successful as that here, which supports not just, you know, filmmakers and artists and musicians, but the local businesses, mm-hmm. you know, every the, the community at large, uh, the amount of the flux of people that come in, you know, for an event like this. Look at New West Fest, for example, as an example of that, where they, they block off all of Old Town and it's three days of you know, music, art, and everybody's having a great time. And I think this, the community, the local community really loves things like that. And this is the, the version of that that's missing is, is the film festival. Yeah. We saw the need. We had people in the community that we're connected to that expressed they were hungry for that. And so we saw an opportunity to provide it. And so that's why we decided to team up and do it. And the other, the other thing that I just wanted to touch on is that, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about sometimes that I hear Fort Collins is this way and Loveland's that way, or there's a lot of almost talk about these being these these different communities that aren't really connected to each other, you know? And then you go down to Denver or, or Boulder and, and they're not even like thinking about us, you know? There, there's no reason for us not to be working together, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, and putting our strengths <clears throat> together to really call ourselves NOCO, Northern Colorado, and, and think of us as one entity that has the ability to put our minds together and, and make something awesome happen. Yeah, there have been some natives on the show. I'm not aware if you all are Colorado natives, but they have told me, you know, off the recording, they appreciate the idea that they've grown up in Greeley or they've grown up in Loveland. And to hear this part of the state be called something, yeah. NOCO, is meaningful to them. And, you know, maybe 20 years ago, Loveland and Fort Collins didn't rub noses, but now they do. It's <laughs> like if you're, if you're growing down Shields... Where Fort Collins ends and and where Loveland begins, uh, for someone not from here, like myself, it's hard to find anymore. Well, it actually begins, we think, at Horse Tooth Mountain, and that's why we call it Horse Tooth (laughs) International Film Festival. We had some people saying, call it Fort Collins Film Festival. There isn't one, you know, or, or, and Loveland is is hungry for this kind of stuff, and they're, and they're like, why not Loveland Film, you know? And so we, as by calling it Horse Tooth International Film Festival, you know, we, we did that because it's a beacon in NOCO that everybody can feel like is, is partly their own, yeah. you know, and, and everybody can connect to it. So with the fact that I've been studying film festivals for a while and doing research on Sundance and the Austin Film Festival and studying Richard Linklater and studying Robert Redford and what they did, it just seemed like a logical step to name it the Horse Tube Film Festival because of the regional like aspect of it, like Sundance and Canes. Yeah, and being inclusive of, of everybody in that community and, and giving everybody an opportunity to feel like it's their own. Mm-hmm. You know, it's harder to, to make Lo- Loveland feel like it's equally theirs if you call it the Fort Collins Film Festival. Exactly. You know, and, and we don't want to stop with Fort Collins and Loveland. We want Estes Park and Greeley and, and you know, Berthoud. I mean, at this point, it might be Southern Wyoming, Wyoming, too, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people getting excited just for the fact that we've created this. It's just like this growing northern Colorado thing. And, and even Longmont. I mean, like, where where is the line? Of, if you look at a map, you could argue Denver's in northern Colorado. You could. Yeah. But, you <laughs> they know, won't. I mean, they, they, wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't be part of it. I guess it's pretty... Not yet. But they, there will be people coming up from there already exactly. that we know about. And, there are going to be And that's the up. idea. I mean, it's small enough and, and condensed enough that, you know, people in Fort Collins or, or northern Colorado in general are participating in the Breckenridge Film Festival in Denver. I mean, it's all close enough that we can be helping each other grow and participating in each other's things. We're, we're not trying to compete with Boulder. We're not trying to compete with Telluride. We're just trying to add another opportunity 
for filmmakers to to get their stuff out there and, and take it to the next level. One thought I had when I was driving over here is I wanted to um, field your thoughts about why did LA and Hollywood become this magnet for filmmaking? And my only idea was like, was it weather associated? Was it just because it was consistent sunny weather, like two cloudy days a year and then everyone just happened to be there and then maybe somehow New York launched because of population. You had mentioned that Missouri is basically the opposite of filmmaking Mecca. Exactly. You know, why Why do you think the we've, we've gravitated towards the coast and, and ignored beautiful places like, hello, Colorado? Well, I mean, I can answer that pretty well. I think may, a lot of it was based on the development of the country and like Southern California and and up in the Northeast is where a lot of people were. That's where the money was. That's where the stock market was and like, even New York. And that transferred over to L.A. where a lot of, like, you get a lot of shipments in and stuff. So what happened is that where, that's where the money was. So what happened is they started growing that world out there and started kind of developing it a little bit stronger. And they just – they actually developed this whole system where basically now, today – at this point, you can go to L.A., you can walk into about 50 different places, and you'll be like, I need a thing to shoot a film. And they will literally hand you a magazine with a, – it's a phone book of people that you can call for everything you need from dogs that you need in your film to, like, different kinds of hats. So what they've done now is they've just developed this massively easy way to make films. You go out there, you're like, if I have the money, I can make a film. So right now what's happening is in the last, like, 10 years – actually, it's been more like the last 20 years – Hollywood and New York have not just been the staples of America and filmmaking has gotten cheaper and easier to create. So what's happening is places like Northern Colorado are becoming this hub where people can create films easier and cheaper. And we've got everything to shoot at here besides the ocean. And <laughs> let's be honest with you, we're really only like a, what, like an hour and a half flight from the coast. So yeah. if we really need to get it, we could. And if you think about it, it definitely doesn't hurt that they have the weather that they have. Yes. And, and if you put yourself back whatever 50, 60, 70 years or when we were actually rolling film and it is way more expensive to produce the film, you know, when your whole day gets screwed up and you're paying for cast and crew and gear and all, all the stuff, uh, waiting for weather to get better, you know, it, to have weather great all the time in Southern California, you know, it, it makes... It's, lo it's logical why, you know, it took off there and, and was easier to film. They also have the ocean, the palm trees, the sun, the mountains are accessible, are. you know, the snow is accessible. There's so many different, like, terrain that that is accessible there that it, it's another, you know, convenience factor to why that might blow and, up there. And talking to some cats that have come out from L.A. to, like, shoot in Aspen and stuff and have brought me on, I've asked them those questions, and a lot of the answer is uh, the infrastructure isn't there yet. And that's not just, like, the idea that we we don't have, like, studios because that's changed. We have so many places you can shoot indoor. It's kind of the funnel system of I-25. Uh, if there was more highways heading north and south and east and west – and as many as L.A. and New York and stuff have come in and out, it's a lot easier to bring people in, fly them in, land them like two feet from the production, and then shoot them and then fly them out. Uh, we are still developing a little bit of that infrastructure. And to be honest with you, the only way I feel like we can help as creatives is to have a festival like Horse Tooth and start bringing the attention here so people do start realizing the need that's, for that That's happening, too. I mean, exactly. we're, we're all a result of, of yeah. that happening. I mean, I'm from, uh, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island border, and Jesse's from Missouri, and Katrina's also from Connecticut. And that, you know, a lot of people in the area are from somewhere else and but love this place and are happy to be here and, and have made it our own, you know, and embraced it as our community. And so we just want to grow it in that way. But we see a, a, an, an influx of artists, filmmakers, all these things looking for a, another way to, you know, get themselves out there and get involved and do what they're used to doing in these now oversaturated markets. Yeah, when you mentioned the traffic on I-25 and not enough roadways going north and south, I feel like every listener at once was fist bumping no matter where they're listening to this. And uh, if they happen to be natives, they're like, well, yeah, four transplants talking about northern Colorado, of course, 25 is backed up. But I've been saying forever since I moved here that we just need I-25 widened from Denver to Fort Collins, at least. Um, there's this weird bottlenecks where it like, gets thin and, and doesn't. But, yeah, just the awareness and bringing people the idea that film can happen here, film should happen here. I mean, look at Breaking Bad. They were going to film it in L.A., 
And then the, the uh, city of Albuquerque and the state of New Mexico reached out, gave them a huge deal they couldn't refuse. And now look at the amount of tourism to Albuquerque just from that one show sure. and filming on location in Albuquerque. Just like, oh, we can film there. And, you know, just bringing that idea to people for northern Colorado, for the Horse Tooth area is huge. And I work up with the Lyric. And last night I had a filmmaker premiere from these filmmakers out of Atlanta. And they told me a fact I didn't know and I had to look it up. But apparently in Georgia last year, there was more TV shows and films shot in Georgia than in L.A. So it's just letting you know that if you do the tax breaks, I'm going to say it again. If you do the tax breaks, Colorado, <laughs> then we can possibly grow just like these other places. Because people will come in and construct that infrastructure that we need. So, And there's plenty of film happening here already, actually. Uh, you know, between Boulder and Telluride so and uh, Denver and Colorado Springs. I mean, there, there's actually a lot happening here and with a lot of national regard already. I mean, you get a lot of celebrities that come into, you know, Boulder and Telluride, their film festivals. So, you know, there is a place for it here and there's a reason that's happening here too. A, because of the arts. B, because it's so beautiful here. And we get 300 plus days of sunshine a year. It's a great, and it's dry. It's, it's, it's another good spot where you can pretty reliably count on the weather to not get in the way of your production. Well, then there's other aspects too. Like you've got the writers, you've got the photographers, you've got all these other creative people that are coming that want to collaborate with filmmakers. So it's, you're building that infrastructure in a different way from the creative perspective and that's too. that's how we met. Yeah. Exactly. I see. So it's not just putting on the film. I made a film. I want to show it here in the horse tooth area, but it's actually like a meet and greet. It's this like mm -hmm. coming together and it's a, it's a communion of people who are like-minded in the arts. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, so I run this thing called the Weekend Warriors Film Festival and that's just a reason for people to come together that have never worked together. So like we try to have mix and mingles for people that are afraid to reach out or don't like know who to talk to. Mm -hmm. So it's there. It's aware. We are just trying to make it even more accessible than it's been in the past with our festival and, you know, go in that direction. And sometimes people think film must mean movie. Yeah. But what we really mean is video. And what company do you know now that doesn't need video? Right. I mean, video is is the, you know, the glue that holds everybody's modern business together. You know, it's the, it's the common thing that we all need to, to take or, or uh, market ourselves and mm -hmm. uh, in the world that we live in now on in the social media you know uh, world that we live in now so um, it's relevant to everybody absolutely so what is something that each of you hope that someone who attends or is involved in this film festival in some way what is the biggest thing to you that you hope people get out of it or that it brings no co yeah for me it's it's Again, I want people to, to come, and I think we all want this, uh, people to come to the festival, feel like they had a great time and they can't wait for next year, that they, that they learned from people who, you know, uh, opened their eyes about uh, some topic that they saw in, in one of the films. Uh, we, we really want to, to open people's eyes and select films that, that get people thinking, that expose diversity. We, we want foreign films involved, too, you know, like... You've seen, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen something like, say, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I mean, the whole thing is in another language, and you're like, it, when, you, when you watch it, or Run, Lola, Run, the German movie, right? Like, you see these, I would have never thought of making a movie that way until I saw that, you know? And, and, or, or even imagine that people <coughs> talk to each other that way without seeing that interaction. And it's just, it's one of those things that, the same thing that you get from traveling, where you're just exposed to different culture, exposed to different ideas, and it changes you. And so I want people to feel, you know, inspired, uh, feel like they had a great time and, and consider it, a, you know, a, an annual event for them. I would also echo parts of what Johnny said, especially about inspiration. I think there's a lot of people out there that are creative and they don't understand their own voice yet. And this will give them an opportunity just to check out what other people are doing. How can you push those boundaries? What is it that is calling inside of you that you may not have thought to express in this way? And then they can build a community around that. So it's about the inspiration and then building a conversation for what's next. And this way, they're all in the same space to do that. I would say I want people to feel included. I want them to feel like this is their festival that they're coming to, to meet other filmmakers that they want to work with on a local scale and on an international scale. Something I've noticed going to other festivals as a filmmaker, there's certain elements that 
I would like to, you know, amp up a little bit, you know, and I think that we're going to try to do that with this festival. And, and at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, is I'm probably going to have this like tattooed on my face or it's going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> but literally all I ask is make more films. Yeah. That is, that is the, that is my slogan and I want everyone to do it, whoever you are. So please use this as an opportunity to make more films. And if they're thinking, hmm, maybe HIF is for me, maybe I want to be there. Maybe I don't make films, but I know someone in my family or one of my friends that does. Let's remind people, how can we, the more you know, go send them to you all? Yeah, so we're all over social media right now. We have, you know, great help there with Mastery Consulting, who, who's who been, been helping us with uh, all of our social media stuff. But you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all through Horse Tooth Film Festival is the tag. I think it's Horse Tooth FF on Twitter because it's too long. But also, you can find any of that stuff by just going to our website, horsetoothfilmfestival.com. And we have links to Film Freeway and all that other stuff and, and all of our other sponsors on there, which we're super grateful for. And a little and bit more about us, too. If you want to learn more about the three of us in this room, you can certainly go to our website and check that yeah, out, Yeah, and too. also see our faces. You yeah. can email <laughs> us as well if you, if you have, like, direct inquiries, uh, info at horsetoothfilmfestival.com. Yeah, we're, we have to put guidelines on Film Freeway, but if you have questions about whether or not your film qualifies, please reach out because we want to work with you if we can. Totally. Okay. And whether you have a film or not, just come and have a good time because... You know, whether you're just a movie buff, movie goer, uh, interested in mingling with people or, or just seeing what it's all about, come. We would love to, to have you and, and, and show you what it's all about and, and what we're putting together here. Okay. Well, thank you all for your time. This has been great. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. It. For more about this podcast or our other guests, visit www.themoreyoknowco.com. We have had so many wonderful conversations, you have to give the other episodes a shot. You never know what you're going to find. Thank you to Trevor for mixing and editing all our episodes. Thank you to Kelsey for our awesome logo and artwork. And Russell Isaac Long, my man, and guest of episode 67, is responsible for all our music used here on the Morinoco. So grateful for you, my friend. We will be back soon, listener. Who will it be? What the heck are we going to discuss next? Until next time, peace.